What's up guys, we're back with another educational video and this week we are talking about training frequency and how little or how much you need to keep your gains. And we're looking at a new human randomized control trial. Follow me for more shilling 101. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment for the algorithm. All right, so this week we have a new study where they looked at taking untrained subjects, and actually they were all women. So I always hear from the female crowd, why don't they do more studies in women? Well, here you go, ladies. A study just in women, they took untrained women and they had them do concurrent training. So resistance training plus aerobic exercise. And they had them do this training for 12 weeks. Now, it wasn't crazy intense training. It was two times a week, four sets of six on leg press, basically adding two and a half to 5% load each week and making sure that they were going close to failure in that range. And then they also had them doing some cycling to get concurrent training and they did both twice a week. And they did this for 12 weeks. And so over the course of 12 weeks, as you would expect, they saw increases in cross-sectional area of muscle, they got stronger, all the stuff you expect to see in untrained people who train for 12 weeks. Then they put them into a group that trained either once every seven days, once every 14 days, or completely detrained. What they found was over another 12 weeks, the group that trained once per week kept basically all their gains. The group that trained once every 14 days kept like 90 to 95% of their gains. And the group that detrained uh, basically went back to baseline essentially. I've been seeing some hot takes on this, such as you only need to train once a week to maintain all your gains, you know, once you've built it. I think that is an overextension of this data. I do think what it takes to build muscle is a greater dosage of training than what it takes to maintain it. However, Consider this in this particular human randomized control trial. These people were untrained. They did not need a high dose of training to make progress. And they were only training twice a week. So really you kind of, you cut their, their volume in half. Okay, I mean that's, you know. But again, they're untrained and they've only trained 12 weeks, still training once a week. That doesn't surprise me that that was sufficient to maintain their gains. In fact. I'm kind of surprised they didn't continue making gains, to be honest. Now, to be fair, this fits with some other data we've seen. There was a study in older people looking at either dropping their volume back to a third or a ninth of what it took for them to build muscle and strength, and they found that a ninth for most people still maintained what they built, and a third even allowed to some to continue to progress. So it's not like this is out of alignment with other data, but I think we have to remember the population this is done in. Okay, this is done in untrained people. What about somebody like me who's been training for 25 years consistently and is probably quite close to their genetic maximum? Do I think that I could drop back to training once per week and still keep all my gains? I kind of doubt it. The other thing to keep in mind is they were just doing leg press. If there also had been mixing in upper body stuff, to put it all in one day might have been a lot, but they were, again, just doing leg press. Again, I, I just don't know how much stock I put in the one single study. I think where I land with this is, I agree it takes a much lower dose to maintain what you have built versus to continue building. If you are happy with the amount of muscle mass you've built, or you're someone who is gonna go through a period of time where you're not gonna be able to get to the gym nearly as much, it's still worth going and doing something because you will probably maintain the vast majority of what you built by doing a, still a low amount. But if you're an advanced trainer, can you just get away with drastically reducing your volume and still maintain? I'm not sure about that and I, I kind of doubt it. I think you could cut your volume down for sure. Now, another application of this, if you are someone who's advanced, it gets very hard to progress multiple body parts or multiple lifts if you're a strength athlete at the same time because you're just pooling from your overall recovery pool. But what you could do, for example, if you really wanted to focus on your quadriceps for say 16 weeks, you could drop your volume back on everything else to kind of a maintenance amount and then you could hammer your quads 
for 16 weeks because you have more recovery resources to a lot to that. And then after the 16 weeks, you could switch to maybe another body part and go to maintenance on everything else. It's kind of called volume cycling. It's a concept that James Krieger has talked about before. Shout out to James Krieger, our editor in chief at Reps, our research review. I don't want to overinterpret this data. I think, yes, you can maintain what you built with less volume than what you built it on, which seems to be quite minimal for people who are untrained or intermediate. We don't really know what this means for advanced people. We can only speculate. I would say, as long as you are taking your sets close to failure, if you want to maintain 50% of the volume is maybe safe, probably safe, because that's what they did in this study. And again, the one third group in another study maintained what they built. Again, these weren't advanced trainers, but I think the take home or the, the hot take of, you just need to train one time a week. I think we gotta be careful with that because remember these people were only training twice a week anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed that breakdown. If you like research breakdowns like this, make sure you subscribe to my research review reps. We do a fantastic job of breaking down this research in a way that's palatable and easy for anyone to understand with practical take homes. And we don't just break it down, but we look at the actual data and we don't just regurgitate what the researchers say. We tell you whether or not we agree with the researchers based on their own data and the methods they use to test their hypothesis. So if you're interested in reps, make sure you click the research review. If you need help with your training, we can also hook you up there on biolane.com with the workout builder. We take all the guesswork out of the reps, sets, intensity to use, but we give the flexibility to choose exercises based on what you have available and what your personal preference is. So make sure you check out both of those. If you buy them together, you get a sweet discount on a bundle. And it is a great way to spend a little amount of money and get a lot of brain and physical gains. All right, guys, catch you next week.